I welcome you all to the session of thermal engineering basic and applied. Today we shall discuss about a simple float type carburetor by depicting the geometrical configuration of this particular type of carburetor we shall discuss the uh, flow analysis because we have seen carburetor is a special device and this particular device is integrated with the you know internal combustion engine that is the spark ignition engine and the sole purpose of this device is to supply homogeneous mixture of air and fuel. So, we have understood by this time is that carburetor is provided to ensure that engine will get chemically correct or the stoichiometric air fuel ratio. In the last class we have also discussed it is very unlikely that engine will always get stoichiometric air fuel ratio instead considering several regimes of you know engine operation. We have discussed that carburetor would be able to provide air fuel mixture or fuel air mixture in a given range and that is the combustible range of any particular type of fuel. So, sometimes it may be higher than the stoichiometric ratio or it may be lesser than the stoichiometric ratio. So, today what we will do we shall uh, draw a simple float type carburetor then we shall go for its analysis. So, if we try to draw the simple float type carburetor If we draw here, It is not exactly at the middle, so let us try to draw it. This is section AA through this section air is taken. Now, this particular element is Okay. Now, I would like to show it 
one float valve so this is float valve this is air vent this air vent is provided to ensure that that this is fuel tank so basically fuel is open to atmosphere so the pressure acting on the fuel surface is atmospheric pressure this is the path through which fuel from tank so fuel from tank is taken to this uh, reservoir through this line and this is basically float chamber so this is the float chamber you know that fuel is coming from fuel tank through this line and it is entering into this float chamber and this is the float this is the float you have seen in daily life the application of float valve so this is float right and if we see this is so idea is you know that though it is not complete but we have say here one if i draw one this is the throttle valve and then two engine cylinder so this is basically intake manifold you can say so this is the intake manifold now let us briefly discuss idea is air will come through this manifold of course air cleaner should be there so clean air clean air is taken now we need to have some arrangement so that air will flow through this uh, flow path and while air is flowing you can understand this is open to atmosphere this is also air vent so this the pressure acting on the fuel surface is also atmosphere we need to create so air will flow through this you know uh, path through this path and while air is flowing we also need to have simultaneous flow of fuel from float chamber into this particular uh, pathway through this particular you know system and that is known as orifice so this is calibrated orifice and this is tip of orifice okay and so this is section bb what what did i say i said that when air will flow through this pathway the flow of air also will try to induce or flow of air also will try to induct certain amount of fuel that is required for that specific operation from float chamber into this pathway that is some fuel will be injected through this calibrated orifice and it will be discharged at the tip of the orifice. So, we need to make some arrangement through this 
have this simple flow type carburetor that simultaneous uh, you know flow air and fuel will have simultaneous flow. So, air will flow from the air cleaner that is clean air should be taken to remove all the dust particles which are there in the air and the flow of air also will try to induct certain amount of fuel from the float chamber through this calibrated orifice and that you know metering fuel should be discharged at the tip of the orifice by how we can do it because this is also open to atmosphere this is also open to atmosphere. So, we need to have some kind of pressure difference. So, when air is flowing through this particular pathway if we can somehow made or if you if you if we can somehow make an arrangement that the flow of air will also create a pressure difference between the float chamber and tip of the orifice and that pressure difference will allow liquid fuel to flow through this calibrated orifice and fuel will be discharged at the tip of the orifice by how. So, to have this we need to have some constricted passage and that constricted passage will reduce the uh, pressure and it will increase the velocity. So, that means, air is coming from top if we can somehow increase the velocity of air in this location where tip of the orifice is there and that increased velocity will lead to a drop in pressure and that pressure difference because this is the atmospheric pressure if we can reduce the pressure at this at the tip of the orifice less than atmospheric pressure that pressure difference will allow liquid fuel to flow from float chamber through the calibrated orifice and up to this point that is tip of the orifice. So, what we can do this is done uh, you have studied in fluid mechanics that what we need to do we need to provide venturi. we need to provide venturi. Okay. So, we are providing venturi what it does the venturi is essentially reducing the flow area. So, when the air will approach this venturi velocity will increase that is flow will accelerate at the cost of the at the cost of this accelerated flow pressure will drop and the drop in pressure should be such that the pressure difference between float chamber and at the tip of the orifice is the driving force for the flow of fuel from float chamber into this point I know up to this point. So, this is uh, let me write here this is basically fuel. So, this is fuel. Okay. Now, we need to know the drop in pressure exactly at the tip of the orifice rather in, the, in this location what we can do we can measure this drop in pressure by you know connecting a you know manometer here. So, let me here So, this is P atmospheric. So, you can understand this is P atmospheric and pressure at this junction will be less than atmospheric by this height and that we can measure what is the pressure by measuring the you know rise of the manometric liquid uh, in this YouTube manometer and we can calculate what is the pressure drop and whether that pressure drop is sufficient to have flow of fuel considering fuel viscosity, surface tension etcetera because when fuel will flow from float chamber through this or calibrated orifice up to the uh, tip of the orifice accounting for the frictional loss due to viscosity of the fuel as well as surface tension we need to design the venturi accordingly. Okay. Now, so basically you, know, you see that when liquid fuel is trying to you know say so this is the this is the fuel initial height ok. So, this is the fuel initial height uh, I should uh, 
this is the fuel initial height ok. So, this distance this distance which is So, this distance is delta h. So, this is delta h. So, we need to overcome this static height delta h together with the frictional loss as well as surface tension effect. So, pressure difference should be such that we can overcome the frictional loss effect that will be there due to surface tension as well as the static height. So, that liquid fuel will be injected at this location. So, this is the venturi center of the venturi. So, this is basically uh, the idea now let us you see that the flow of air is there clean air because it the air should be taken through cleaner air cleaner. So, that dust particle will be removed. So, clean air is flowing the flow of air is now simultaneously inducting liquid to be metered from fuel chamber into the this venturi and the fuel that is being injected will be atomized and will be convected by the air flow. So, good, good thing is the reduction in pressure will allow liquid fuel to flow from this chamber to this particular point. The moment when fuel is getting injected here the velocity of, air, velocity of air is even more. So, the high velocity of air will try to atomize the fuel which is being injected here not only that and that will be convected. So, basically that fuel which is atomized. So, fuel evaporation will start from this particular you know part of this venturi uh, part of the carburetor and that atomized fuel also will be convected by the air stream further downstream and it will go to the engine cylinder. So, this is basically you know the throttle valve that is given we have seen the you know utility of this particular component because we need to have uh, almost uh, you know closed throttle valve during idling condition. So, by tuning this throttle valve opening area we also can control the pressure difference right. Maybe this port is this particular you know manifold is connected to the engine cylinder. So, when piston will come from T D C to B D C we are creating pressure drop inside the engine cylinder provided this throttle valve is fully open. If the throttle valve is not fully open though we are creating pressure difference inside the cylinder by you know bringing piston from T D C to B D C that pressure difference will not be felt by the air which will flow from air cleaner to, through the venturi towards the engine cylinder. So, that is that is given because to meter the amount of fuel air mixture to be supplied to the engine to the engine depending on the load. So, this is all about the simple float type carburetor idea is we need to supply air fuel mixture. So, we are getting clean air we are getting fuel from this and ultimately in this position we are getting air plus fuel. So, this is air plus fuel. Okay. So, this is the idea. So, now let us quickly do the analysis. So, basically what would be the mass flow rate of air and mass flow rate of fuel? We are interested in the mass flow rate of fuel as well as mass flow rate of air. So, this is mass flow rate of air and this is mass flow rate of fuel. So, these two quantities are very important to know whether the simple float type carburetor is able to meet the demand of the engine or not, whether the simple float type carburetor is able to meet the demand of the engine or not. So, let us now look at the uh, mathematical expression of the mass flow rate and by what we have understood that flow rate will be also controlled by the size of the venturi because we need to calculate mass flow rate of air and mass flow rate of fuel exactly at this junction. So, the geometrical configuration or geometrical dimension of the venturi will dictate 
the mass flow rate of air which in turn will also control the mass flow rate of fuel right and whether mass flow rate of fuel is sufficient or not that is that is determined by the pressure drop and to do to do that we have connected one u tube manometer over here so if we apply now steady state steady flow energy equation right so basically if we go to the previous slide so this is bb and this is sex a so if we apply steady flow energy equation between sections a and section bb to calculate what is the mass flow rate of air right because we need to calculate mass flow rate of air as well as mass flow rate of fuel at section bb okay so let us now write uh, for steady state steady flow process between sections a a and b b what we can write we can write h a plus c a square by 2 equal to h b plus c b square by 2. So, this is enthalpy of you know at section b b enthalpy of the flowing air stream. See we have written this because there is no heat and work interaction. So, that is we have written that is in absence of any heat and work interactions. Okay. So, that is can write. Now, that is enthalpy of air stream at section A, this is the velocity of air stream at section A that is obviously higher than the velocity at section BB because that is what we need. We need to increase the velocity at velocity of air at section BB and that is why we have provided venturi. So, now C A is much much less than C B because cross sectional area of A is much larger than of B B. Okay. And also this section is uh, the air at this section is in atmospheric condition and this section A is far away from section B B. Though we could not show it properly in the schematic depiction, but section A is far away from section B B and this is the air at that section is in the atmospheric condition. So, this is what we have written. So, basically if this is the case, the consequence of this is that we can write C A is almost equal to 0 as compared to C B. So, what we can write? We can write h a equal to h b plus c b square by 2 and from there we can calculate c b equal to 2 into h a minus h b. Okay. So, if we assume that air though it is not purely air, air fuel mixture, but we can assume that the working fluid there is behaving just like an ideal gas. And if that is the case for an ideal gas assumptions, for an ideal gas assumptions, we can write C B is equal to 2 C P T A minus T B. C that means velocity is nothing but 2 C P into T A minus T B, but you know that T A and T B is T A is the atmospheric you know temperature of air, but T B we need to calculate. So, we really do not know what is the temperature of air at section B B. Okay. So, if we now 
we had seen that we have connected an U tube manometer at section BB, so we can measure the pressure drop. Okay. So, if we measure the pressure drop, then perhaps we can measure the pressure at section BB by measuring pressure at section BB we can relate T B or in other way this T B T A is known, but T B can be written in terms of the pressure at section BB. Okay. So, for this you know isentropic expansion here we can write assuming the process is isentropic process that is that is between sections A and B B. So, assuming the process is isentropic between sections A and B B, we have also already assumed ideal gas assumptions and we are also assuming that the process is process can be modeled by an isentropic process. Then we can write T B by T A. Okay. So, equal to P B by P A power gamma minus 1 upon gamma. Okay. That means, so this C B can be written under root 2 C P T A into 1 minus P B by P A power gamma minus 1 power half. That means, if we take T A outside and we, we can take under root 2 C P T A outside because C P is known, T A is known and now we can write P B by P A is the atmospheric pressure that is section at pressure at section A and P B that is uh, that needs to be calculated by using simple uh, float uh, that U tube manometer. Okay. Then what would be the mass flow rate? So, you know mass flow rate of air m dot a that is equal to because we need to calculate mass flow rate of air. So, this is air this a stands for air I, I am writing a i r and that is at section b b. If I use suffix a that will stands that, that, that will stand for section a, but to avoid any confusion I am writing m dot air that is mass flow rate of air and we are interested in calculating the mass flow rate of air at section b b. So, that is rho b into area b into velocity into c b rho a into velocity rho into a b into c b a b that we know because that is what we are designing the venturi rho b that we also need to know because rho b is not calculated, but we can calculate pressure by using the manometer that is connected at section b b and already we have calculated c b. So, if we write this expression eventually we are getting. So, this is a b into rho b into a b under root 2 c p into t a into 1 minus p b by p a power gamma minus 1 upon gamma power half. So, uh, this is gamma minus 1. So, this is gamma minus 1 upon gamma. Okay. So, this is what we can write very simple expression. Now, it is not complete this expression is not complete because we cannot calculate mass flow rate provided we, we do not calculate rho b. So, in this expression you can understand that we know a b that is the uh, you know uh, cross sectional area of section b b uh, that is uh, obtained from the design of the you know uh, venturi. C p is known, T a is known, P b and P a this ratio is also known, but we also need to know rho b to close this equation. So, also we can write for, is, for an isentropic process. So, for an isentropic process because that is what we, are, we have assumed. So, we have assumed that the air fuel mixture or simply air can be as because we are interested in calculating mass flow rate of air at section B B 
may be after a few cycles of operation at that section it is not purely air rather it is a fuel air mixture. So, we are assuming that that particular you know uh, liquid you know, fluid uh, that is mixture of air and fuel maximum air very less amount of fuel is there can be considered to be an ideal gas uh, and we are assuming that the entire process can be modeled by an isentropic process. So, for an isentropic process we can write T which is proportional to P power gamma minus 1 upon gamma that we can write from the previous expression because we had written T B by T is equal to P B by P A. Now, what is P that is rho R T? So, that is proportional to rho R T power gamma minus 1 upon gamma. So, our objective should be to write rho in terms of T because if we can write in terms of T B by T A then we can relate in terms of P B by P A. Okay. So, what we can write? Uh, from this expression because this is t power gamma minus 1 upon gamma if we take this side then we can write t power 1 upon gamma is proportional to rho power you know uh, gamma minus gamma minus 1 upon gamma. Okay. So, that means t is proportional to rho power gamma minus 1. So, this is what we can write from this. So, if we go to the first you know we, we, we go to the next slide we can write. So, that is T is proportional to rho power gamma minus 1 that therefore, T B by T A is proportional to or I can write I can write this T B by T A is rho B by rho A power gamma minus 1. So, we can write rho b is equal to rho a into T b by T a power 1 upon gamma minus 1 that is rho a into P b by P a power gamma minus uh, 1 by gamma. So, that is 1, uh, one by gamma. Uh, gamma minus 1 gamma minus 1 by gamma into 1 upon gamma minus 1. So, if we write one step further that is rho a into P b by P a power 1 upon gamma. This will get cancel out. So, this is the expression of rho b. So, now knowing the value of rho b we can close that equation that is the mass flow rate of air. So, we can write here that is mass flow rate of air m dot air equal to rho a now rho b is equal to rho a. So, rho a into p b by p a power 1 upon gamma under root 2 c p t a into a b under root 2 c p t a into 1 minus P b by P a power gamma minus 1 upon gamma power half. So, this is the expression of mass flow rate that is what we wanted to have right because so for a given given you know dimension of the venturi that that is a b ambient condition we know because C p T a and P a is known we can measure P b by connecting this U tube manometer that we had seen in the schematic depiction, we can calculate what would be the density of what, what would be the mass flow rate of air at section B B. We can write this expression further in a closed form. So, let me write here. So, m dot air is rho a a b under root 2 C p t a and that means, we are trying to take this component inside this root and we can write this is P b by P a is 2 by gamma that is
minus it would be P B by P A power gamma plus 1 upon gamma power half. So, this is the mass flow rate of air right. So, now you can see in this expression we have expressed the mass flow rate of air that is the flow rate of air at section B B in terms of all known quantities because we know P A the pressure at section A that is the atmospheric pressure atmospheric temperature T A we also can calculate density of air at section A C P is known this A B is only the, this is very important this A B is the venturi area. So, that someone can design accordingly to obtain this much. So, what would be the amount of mass flow rate that of course, as per the requirement of the load or demand of the engine we can design venturi so that we can get the desired mass flow rate. And this mass flow rate is again let me tell you because we have assumed that the mixture of fuel air which is neither purely air at section B B to be an ideal gas and we have assumed that the flow is an isentropic process, but you have seen you have st studied in thermodynamics that a process is isentropic that is a uh, frictionless process and there is no heat interaction no, no heat transfer, but though there is no heat interaction between the uh, in, 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 the, in, the, in the process the process is not involved with any type of heat and work interaction, but we cannot trivially ignore the frictional effect because though the viscosity of air is very small still it is bounded by the solid walls. So, if we go to the uh, schematic depiction that you know that when air is trying to flow over this. So, there is a you know constricted passage moreover solid surfaces are there. So, boundary layer will form. So, basically we cannot trivially ignore the frictional effect. So, accounting for this particular aspect the mass flow rate that we could write over here is not the actual mass flow rate rather this is the ideal mass flow rate. So, this mass flow rate is the ideal mass flow rate. Why? Because accounting for the frictional loss. So, this is the ideal mass flow rate. Now, to get the actual mass flow rate we need to multiply this quantity with one coefficient that you have studied in your fluid mechanics course that when there is we, uh, you know we had studied about venturi meter orifice meter. So, this, this is as good as venturi meter you know that we are providing venturi to reduce the area flow area. So, that the velocity of the flowing fluid can be increased to reduce the pressure. So, that pressure difference is needed to have a flow of fuel from float chamber to the uh, venturi. So, venturi section. So, to obtain to obtain actual mass flow rate that is m dot air actual equal to m dot air ideal multiplied by C D A. So, this is this is m dot air ideal. So, you can understand that this C D A equal to m dot air actual divided by m dot air ideal. So, this is known as discharge coefficient so this is the discharge coefficient so very important that uh, we could establish the expression of actual mass flow rate that we are going to get at section bb and if that mass flow rate is obtained ensuring that the flow rate of fuel should be sufficient to meet the demand of the engine. So, we are getting this much amount of mass flow rate and to obtain this mass flow rate we had to I mean we had to provide venturi that we had seen in the schematic depiction right. So, the carburetor is provided with this venturi 
to reduce the cross sectional area at section BB and the amount of mass the mass flow rate that is obtained at this section BB should be sufficient to meet the demand as well as the mass flow rate also would be you know enough to ensure that the fuel that would be supplied from the float chamber to this particular section is also sufficient. So, basically we are getting we need to design the venture in such a way that there will be flow of fuel from float chamber to this venturi. That means, mass flow rate of fuel should be adequate for the requirement that is you know that, that will vary from uh, uh, that will vary with the load of the engine and also a reduction in cross section area will increase the velocity, but if the area is reducing. So, basically mass flow rate also will reduce mass flow rate of air, but we also need the designer should be careful while designing the system that mass flow rate of air should not be compromised. So, this is what is important to have the optimum design of the venturi. So, to summarize today's class, to summarize what we have discussed in today's class, we have discussed about the operation of a simple float type carburetor, then we have analyzed the flow of air as well as fuel from float chamber into the venturi and finally, we could establish the expression of the mass flow rate of air. And with this I stop here today and in the next class we shall discuss about the mass flow rate of fuel which is also important to know pertaining to this. Mm -hmm.